Hey y'all, what's up? I'm Brian with Fishers Off-Road. Today we're going to be diving into a 2022 Commander Max XT. Now this unit has about 6,000 miles on it and if you know us and how we do reviews, we don't like to do reviews on something right away. We like to get some seat time in it or if it's product, we really like to use it for a while and see what we like and what we don't like. And then we'll also, you know, what are the pros and what are the cons? It's hard to get a read on something when you just go out and drive it one time or you have it for 30 days. You really got to put some time in to figure out whether that's a great product uh, and then what you like and don't like. I get a lot of questions about this unit. I'm going to cover all the questions I get. I'm going to give you the pros and cons and then at the end stick around because I'm going to cover the stuff we usually cover in all of our uh, reviews on vehicles and that's everything from interior comfort, reliability, maintenance, handling, etc, etc, etc. So stay tuned when we're done. We'll see y'all. Here we go. All right, y'all, so now let's take a look at our Commander Max XT after it has about 6,000 miles on it so you know what to expect or maybe some things that uh, may possibly not work as well or go wrong in the long haul. I can show you everything that we've learned about this machine over the amount of time that we've had it. And remember, this it has had all kind of different people in it, different driving styles, using it, abusing it. It is a rental. You know what the saying goes. I'm going to show you a couple things on here to uh, look out for. First of all, one of the things we notice is after we get to using it for a little bit, this rod right here, it uh, is used to open the door when you pull this handle. And you'll notice that that rod is flexing and the door won't open. So what happens is it's just so much wear and tear on this rod that it starts flexing and the, the door panel sits way out here so there's nothing to push against and hold it. So when you pull that, it doesn't push on that to open it. Now when you put your hand inside here, it works. Because what you're doing is you're pulling on that and it works when you're pulling on it but not when you're pushing on it. So that's just one of the things that we've noticed that doesn't work as well. The seat belts don't retract like they should. These seat belts right here, uh, this seat belt right here, this is kind of what it turns into and we've taken them apart, we've power washed them, we've lubed them, we've done everything we can to try and get those things to work and they just don't seem to work like they should. Another thing we noticed after, I'd say, I don't know, maybe, a thousand miles something like that 800 miles we noticed that the coolant line was rubbing against the plenum here the airbox plenum and it rubbed a hole through and this happened on all of our units the maverick sport maxes and the commander maxes so we got new hoses we replaced them and we also bent this tab down right here so that way it wasn't touching the hose uh, that way when the machine's going down the trail and it's vibrating it's not rubbing on that airbox plenum and it's not rubbing that little tab right there and rubbing a hole through it. If you have a Maverick Sport Max, you might want to check that hose right there to make sure it's not rubbing through. Uh, if it is, just contact your dealer. We got new hoses for ours. I'm not sure if they have a bulletin out for that yet or not. Another thing we did, of course, you know, you got your driveline chatter right around 4,700 RPMs, that sweet spot of 25 to 30 miles an hour. There is a bulletin for that drive shaft upgrade. Uh, so I'll put the number here on the screen. You can see what that is if you've got a Commander or Maverick Sport Max and it's making that drive line chatter. Just call up your dealer and say you'd like to get that bulletin done. Our dealer told us is that uh, Can-Am is putting in a cardboard sleeve in that tube to dampen the rattle vibration. And it does work. It seems to be about 80% better. So that's better than what it was. So if you do have one of these vehicles, and another thing you can do is run it in four-wheel drive. When you put it in four-wheel drive, the drive line chatter goes away for us. We noticed that on all of our vehicles that it does go away. So there's just a couple things to look for. One thing I will mention, these are stock tires. We've always had a problem with stock tires on our vehicles because they're typically garbage. This is a Trail King XPS tire that can am put on here it's a 28 inch these things have held up extremely well this is not a square tire setup you got a couple splits here and there and a plug but man i'll tell you what for a tire that is not a square tire setup that you can't rotate 
and having 6,000 miles on it, for a bigger lug tire, this is not too bad. This is actually surprising. Now you'll see where it is cupping. You know, this lug here is lower than this lug, so when it cups, you're going to start to get a little bit of a bounce. Not much. You don't even notice it, really. And all of our trails or riding and driving is pretty much on dirt roads, creek crossings. And that's another thing you got to consider. Every tour has about 30 creek crossings. So these things have lived in water and back roads and a lot of rocks and gravel and sharp shale stuff. So for all that, this vehicle has actually held up extremely well. We haven't had any kind of mechanical issues, no clutching, no belts. Uh, so I'm telling you what, uh, for us, they have done phenomenal. So there's just a couple little things that I think if Can-Am tweaked, man, they would just have a great machine. And remember, I always tell you, there is no such thing as a perfect machine. And I mean that. I don't care who makes it. Some machines have less drawbacks or flaws than others, and then some have a whole lot more. But there's no perfect machine on the market. But I will tell you one thing, if they tweaked a couple of these little things like the door handle here and the seat belts um, and that driveline chatter, this vehicle would be darn near perfect. So that's just our assessment after about 6,000 miles of what you can expect. All right, y'all, welcome back. I hope that covered a lot of the questions that you had about the unit, and maybe there were some things in there that you didn't think of or didn't know about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue that. We're gonna go on to the next part of the review here, and we're gonna talk about a lot of different things about the machine. We're gonna score it, and then we're gonna grade it at the very end and give you an idea of what you can expect if you're looking at this vehicle. One of the first things we're gonna look at here is interior comfort uh, and then we're going to score this on a 1 to 10 and then we'll have the total at the very end so as far as interior comfort uh, i would probably say that that's um that's probably about um a nine as far as interior comfort and and i don't give it a 10 because man i really have to have something that's exceptional for me to give it a 10. so overall i would say nine is good and it's really hard to have interior comfort for everybody from five foot to six foot eight we had a basketball player the other day on one of our tours and he was six foot eight and he drove the commander just fine, loved it. I've got a doctor that comes out and does our tours. He's 6'6". Um, we've had Michael Orr, the football player, out, and he's driven the commander, and he fit perfect. So um, the commander is a good uh, vehicle all around for short people and tall people. Uh, then also the front and the back, it's a lot of room, and it's comfy for the passengers. So interior comfort i'm going to give that a nine now we're going to look at reliability as far as reliability the commanders have been bulletproof we have not had any problems with them we've just done preventative maintenance you know your basic air filter oil change diff fluid change uh, that kind of thing so um i'm gonna probably i mean even though i i could give that a 10 for reliability because we have had zero issues and um we've had quite a few of these units so Man, that's, that's between a nine or a 10, but let's, let's just, uh, you know what, let's give that a 10 because we haven't had any issues at all. Nope, you know what, I, I take that back. Let's give it a nine just because of that coolant line that rubbed through on them, uh, which we've got some new ones recently and it's been changed, so we don't seem to have that issue right now because it looks like everything has been changed. Maintenance, um, I mean, that's, that's probably a, a nine as well because it's fairly easy to do maintenance on this machine as far as like getting in there, changing the oil, diff fluids. I like how the bed comes up and you can undo the, the pin there and put the bed straight up in the air so you can really get in there and work on that machine. So maintenance, I'm gonna say a nine. Uh, handling, I think it's a really good handling vehicle. You don't get a lot of wandering all over the place. The steering is on point. So uh, let's give that a 10 for handling. It's just, it just rides and drives really nice. Power, you know, I'm gonna give that a solid, um, I'll give that a solid nine because the power on it is, is really good. And one of the things Can-Am did is they kind of tuned it a little bit. And we're going to talk about that right here because we're going to talk about the noise. Uh, some vehicles, uh, some side-by-sides are so noisy that, man, it sucks driving them. You can't talk to anybody. 
but uh, Can-Am did a really good job with making it where it's more manageable. And that's one of the reasons why we run the Commanders, because they are quieter. So they're a quieter vehicle. Um, so as far as power, let's give that a nine. Uh, suspension, you know, that's a solid, you know, nine as well. Turning radius, you know, that's I mean, it does turn good for a four-seater. I can't complain at all. We're going to give that a nine. A line of sight visibility, uh, I'm going to give that an eight just because if you're shorter uh, and you're coming up over uh, a ridge or a knoll or something, the hood, the way it's designed, it does stick up a little bit further, so it is a little bit harder to see what's right in front of you. So I'm going to give that an eight for line of sight and visibility. As far as like everything else though, it's not bad. Um, we do use mirrors so you can see when you're backing up, but the back end is a little bit higher. So you'll need a mirror and we use side mirrors on the doors as well. So we, we use side and rear view mirror. Um, uh, I'd just give it an eight just because seeing over that hood is just a little bit more difficult if you are shorter. Probably if you're six five, six six, it's no big deal at all. Cab noise and heat. Uh, cab noise, excellent. This thing is not noisy at all. As far as the heat, I'm going to give it an 8 because you do get heat coming up through the shift gate, which is great in the winter. Um, and if you're running a full windshield that doesn't flip up, which we always run flip up windshields because I like to get air in there. And I've had some folks hit me up and ask me about the Maverick Trail, uh, Maverick Sport Max, and they asked me about the heat. Um, they're running a full windshield and it gets hot. It will get hot on you if you run a full windshield. The flip up windshield, we run a super ATV flip up windshield and we also run the Can-Am power flip windshields. I will tell you right now, the Can-Am power flip windshields are more money, but they are well worth it just because of the fact that they do repel the water a lot better and it's a power button, you just push it and it comes up as far as you want. You don't have like one notch, two notch to pick. Okay, I want this much. It goes the whole way up if you want and the whole way closed if you want. So the power flip, it is more expensive, but I do really like the power flip windshield from Can-Am on this vehicle. So last but not least, we're going to look at fit and finish, uh, the look, the craftsmanship, the welds, powder coat, that kind of thing. Fit and finish, man, I think it. I think it's a really good looking machine. I think it just, when you look at it, it just looks uh, very welcoming and it looks tough. I think it looks like it can get the job done. And I like the tires that are on it. They got kind of an aggressive look. It's a little bit more of a, a knobby tread look. So I do like the fit and finish. I think everything's clean. Everything's well done. And Can-Am, you know, they're, I mean, they're top of the line whenever it comes to fit and finish anyhow. They're not like some of the other manufacturers where it's just kind of like, ah, eh, it looks like maybe a second tier level uh, manufacturer. So when you're looking at a vehicle, fit and finish is really important because this is something you're going to be riding and driving and you're going to be in it for a while. And most people buy a side by side and they stick with it for a few years. So that's one of those things, you know, fit and finish is really important, especially on a long day's ride, uh, your comfort, all that. I would give it a 10, except for uh, the seat belts and the door handles. That's two things, and then also the driveline chatter, but let's just throw all three of those things in there together, and I'm going to give it an 8 just for that. All right, y'all, 88 is our grand total for this vehicle, which is very respectable. I would highly recommend the Commander Max XT. I think it's a great vehicle, runs good, drives good, it's quiet. Uh, at the end of the day, these things do really well for us. So that's just uh, kind of my input and uh, my two cents on the uh, Commander. So there you go, guys. I hope that helps you out. If you got any questions, feel free to hit me up. We'll see y'all. Take care. Have a good one.